Okay, all right, so I wanted to demonstrate uh, the simplicity of this procedure and also use of a K-wire as a pre-drill. Uh, I think the key is a longitudinal incision because it's extensile, so you can actually extend it a little bit. And I'm gonna make it a little longer because I'm by myself without an assistant. And so the key first is creating a little bit of a opening around the edges so you have a little bit of tissue release and then a transverse incision like we all do to be able to open up the joint. And then I think the key there is actually releasing anterior to the proximal phalanx so that you can get the reamers into place. So I'll bring that knife up underneath and rotate it a little bit and then also bringing it up underneath the middle phalanx and just walking it around to create a little bit of release there so that it allows that to sit up a little bit better. Okay, and then our pilot holes are drilled first. And I think holding on to the proximal phalanx by place with, to stabilize it with, an, with a forcep is important. You'll start your hole a little bit anterior, spin it to drill, and then allow it to drive down, and that's our drill hole. And then our second drill hole ends up being in the middle phalanx, and you wanna keep the distal DIP joint extended during that procedure. So I want to go out, so to create the hole beyond the DIP joint, so it's going to come out the tip a little bit and then back. So this is using, utilizing a battery drill using the larger collet set on large, or sorry, set on small to be able to grab each of the stems and that holds up really well to be able to spin those. So then again, I'm going to grab the phalanx with the forcep to stabilize it while it spins and then make sure that you're not catching any of the middle phalanx. And then the spin, down to a stop, okay? And then we'll switch that out to the distal drill or the, the female drill. Again, into the hole, stabilizing this one with your hand and avoiding making sure you don't hit that stem or the peg. And then bearing that. And then it's important at this point to remove any bone on a larger phalanx around the edges to allow it to come together. So, so in this case, a rungeur would be best. I'm going to use a small hemostat to kind of break away that little bit of bone that's on the edge there. And then also on the outside edge there too, just to make sure we don't have any residual bone edge there so that it's nice and flush around the edges. And now you can go back to the same K-wire that you drew, drilled your pre-drill with. And I'd like to drive these, and this is the best way to do this, is down the same pilot hole, retrograde, keep the toe extended. So I'm going to bring it out in a retrograde fashion. Just barely out a little bit so you can put that tip into the hole, your pilot hole that's in the middle of that peg. So you'll lift that up a little bit to be able to get it there. I'm going to grab it again with the phalan grab it with the uh, forcep to be able to do that well. And you'll just drop that, lift it, and then drop it in so that it, holds, so it drops down tight. And then drive the pin straight across to the base. If you want to go just to the base of the toe with a threaded K wire so you have stability, or now I can drive that across. If, I put, if I'm looking for medial deviation correction, then that can go across the joint. Now I have stability across the joint for the period of time until you pull that pin out. So again, even with the pin out, the stability of that, of that joint is incredibly stable. So there's no movement there whatsoever. So rock solid. And that's with a cadaver without very, with, with pretty, pretty limited bone quality.